So I'm re-recording this video because the original one didn't have any audio, so this is going to be a little awkward, but I think I'll make it work. So one of the things that we need to know how to do is how to analyze the graph of a function when we're given a graph of a derivative. So we're not looking at the graph of this, but this derivative itself, trying to get the stuff, but this is the graph of the derivative, and we're trying to get stuff about the original function. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to sort of, sort of figure out how to interpret what's on the graph based on what we see. So we need to know when the graph, when the, the derivative is positive. When the derivative is positive, that happens when you have the graph of a derivative when it's above the x-axis, because that's the y values of the derivative. So you've got the graph of the derivative, if it's above the x-axis, the derivative is positive. Likewise, the derivative is negative at these areas. And that's where the derivative is below the x-axis. Now, we also will want to be able to know information about the second derivative. And remember, to find the second derivative, you take the derivative of the derivative. So when you're looking at the graph of the first derivative, the second derivative will be the slopes on this graph. So if I were trying to figure out where the second derivative was positive, these are the places where I'm marking in green where the slopes are positive on the graph of the derivative. So second derivative is positive when the slopes on the graph of the derivative are positive. Likewise, the second derivative is negative when the slopes on the first derivative are negative, because the derivative of the derivative is negative. Now, when we go to analyze a function based on the graph of a derivative, we're going to do it very similar to what we did when we had the equation. We're going to draw sine lines for the first and second derivative. And the way we're going to do this, the first derivative, we draw, we find where it equals zero first. Remember, we'll always find where it equals zero where it's undefined. And I'm marking those points now. Those are going to be the things that go on my sine line. And then I'm going to figure out whether the first derivative is positive or negative based upon whether it's above or below the x-axis. So it's above between negative 5 and through negative 3, below between negative 3 and 1, above between 1 and 4, and below from 4 to the end. We're talking about the interval from 5 to negative 5 to 5, so I'm going to mark this endpoint of 5. So now above that, I can mark where the original function is increasing and decreasing, because I know where the first derivative is positive or negative. And now you can see that I've got some relative maximums and relative minima there. I'm going to do the same thing for the second derivative. But when I'm doing the thing for the second derivative, remember those are slopes on the graph of the derivative. So I'm going to mark where the, deriv the slopes change sign, which are there, there. Not there, but it doesn't change sign, it just changes suddenly, but it's still positive. And there. So it's like, it looks like it's neg I said negative 4 negative 1, and positive 2. And then again, I make my sine line by whether the slopes are positive or negative. So it's positive from negative 5 to negative 4, negative from negative 4 to negative 1, positive from negative 1 to 2, and negative from 2 to 5. And again, because this is the second derivative, if we're looking at the original function, those tell you concavity. So concave up, down, up, down. So now I've got the full analysis of my function, which I don't have the graph of, and I can start drawing conclusions. So let's start answering these questions that are over here. So for part A, we're going to find all values of x for this relative maximum. If you look at the sine line for the first derivative, the first derivative changes sine from positive to negative, so it goes from increasing to decreasing, at negative 3 and at 4. So those are the places where the relative maxima happen. But it also said justify your answer. So I need to write the reason for that. And the reason is because the derivative is positive to the left and negative to the right of those numbers. Now for part B, it says find all values of x at which the graph of f has a point of inflection. Well, that's place for the second derivative changes sign. So if you look at the second derivative sine line, 
That happens in three places, four, negative four, positive one, and two. So those are the locations of my points of inflection. And again, I need to justify my answer. So I'm gonna write a reason because the second derivative changes sign. Now, part C. Find all intervals at which the graph is concave up and also has positive slope. So we're gonna look at the sign lines again. So where it's concave up, the second derivative is positive. So let me mark those intervals. And then where it has positive slope, that's where the first derivative is positive. So let me mark those intervals. And then we're looking for the intervals where both of those things are true. So you can see from negative five up until Let's see, start to negative five, and then at negative four, we're gonna lose the concave up. So from negative five to four, it's both of those things. We're looking for basically where these overlap. And the next place they overlap is gonna be over in the second part, starting at one and ending at two. So those would be places where it's concave up and has positive slopes, and we need to explain our reasoning. So we're going to write a reason again. The second derivative was greater than zero. That's the concave up part. And the first derivative was also greater than zero. That's the positive slope part. All right, hope this explanation works for you.